Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we want to do a little bit of an informative video for you VP44 guys, and also this crosses over for you 0304 uh, early common rail guys, about how to tell if your truck has the lift pump in the tank. So, give you a little bit of backstory um, on this entire situation. So, in the 1998 and a half model year, uh, Dodge began using the 24 valve Cummins inside of their trucks. It has a VP44 injection pump or high side pump. Uh, and couple that with the uh, lift pump that supplies fuel to the VP44. That was a block mounted lift pump. Now that, uh, that configuration remained from the 98 and a half model year through the 2002 model year, which was the end of the VP44 second gen Cummins that we all know and love. Then came 2003, the introduction of the Common Rail 5.9 motor in the uh, third gen platform at that time. Again, this was CP3 high pressure Common Rail uh, fuel system, but it had a lift pump again. The lift pump this time was on the back of the fuel filter. So now that you know the history of that, let's talk to you about where the in tank pump comes into play here. At some point during uh, the 2000s, what Dodge started to, to do was to go away from block mounted lift pumps. If you had a truck that went into your Dodge garage warranty work for lift pump, what they did was they converted it over to an in-tank lift pump. That's just more efficient pumping system. Um, I, say, I say this all the time here in the shop. When you dig a well, you don't dig a well and go to the house and put your pump at the house. You dig a well and you put the, the pump at the well. So you want your pump as close to your source of the liquid that you're transferring. That's just, that's just fluid dynamics or, or, or however you want to say it. Dodge went with that theory. Also, a, it was also a cooled uh, pump when it was submerged in the end tank. Um, you know, they had a lot of advantages there, but again, that pump will fail. Um, so you had failures of something that was now inside the tank, so it was a lot harder to change. You had to drop the tank, get to the lift pump, so on and so, so forth. So that's um, where the in-tank lift pump came in these models, in the second gen and the early third gen models. Now, the reason why we tell you this is because one question we get at thoroughbred diesel all the time is how do i know if i have a lift tank pump and this is for you guys that are going to convert and go away from the factory style lift pump and you want to do a performance pump like an air dog or a fast uh, fuel lab bd diesel any of the other lift pumps that are out there how do i know whether i've got the lift tank in the uh, the, uh, the your lift pump in the tank the reason why you've got to know this is because you can't just buy, let's just take any of our, our aftermarket lift pumps. You can't just buy one of these lift pumps and then hook it up to your tank to supply fuel because the pump in the tank is actually gonna be, or is gonna serve as a restriction. When you have that lift pump in the tank, you're not gonna get proper fuel flow to your aftermarket lift pump that you purchase. Thereby, you're not gonna get proper uh, fuel flow, low side fuel flow going to your VP44 could cost you a VP44. So you have to be able to identify whether you have the in tank pump or not because that tells you whether you've got to drop the tank. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to show you what it looks like on a second gen truck. Uh, if you've got it, in fact, we don't have a truck that's got a conversion kit on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what it looks like when your lift pump is on the side of the block. All right, so Adam's gonna come over here and he's gonna start getting his camera set up. I'm gonna use my uh, thermal uh, my thermal tool here that's going to have a red dot laser pointer on it and I'm actually going to point to the lift pump. So on your second gen trucks, driver's side of the engine behind the stock fuel filter housing just above the starter you will find your block mounted lift pump. If your truck has not been converted the lift pump will be there. Now I'm going to hit it with the laser dot right now and I'm actually just going to point to the lift pump itself. This body right here is the bottom of the pump you can see at the very bottom of it, there's an electrical connector. If you see an electrical connector on this unit, that is the block mounted lift pump. Now, now that we've shown you that, and you can also see, I can't get to it, but just above that, there are fuel lines on the end and the outside of that, that's your fuel delivery lines. This is coming from the tank. This side here is gonna be going to your injection pump. Again, here is the power supply to the bottom of the lift pump. Now. Now that we've shown you where the pump is, if you had the in-tank conversion here, what would happen 
is this would not be here. The pump would not be here. This is removed and there's an aluminum block that goes there. There's two fuel lines that go into the aluminum block. The aluminum block is probably about yay tall. It's probably, let's say it's an inch tall. It mounts directly to that uh, block that your, your normal uh, fuel pump went to. Dodge sent a harness for this. It picked up its power supply from the harness that the original fuel pump used and then spliced into the wires going into the tank. They put the in-tank pump in, whole new fuel sending unit. It was a drop-in, spliced in the wires, supplied power back to that lift pump, and all was well. So um, that's showing you how you can tell on a second gen whether you have the, um, whether you have the pump on the block or not. Now I want to talk to you just a little bit about you third gen guys to see if you've got a, uh, if your truck has been converted. On the back of the fuel filter on the third gens, on the back of the fuel filter, there'll be something that's, uh, it's actually attached to the fuel filter. It's probably the, di the diameter of that, uh, that infrared thermometer there. It's directly on the back of the fuel filter and there's a fuel line going into it, uh, into the bottom of it. And that's your uh, suction side from the tank. And then it supplies to the fuel filter housing. It's bolted there. So if you see a fuel line that's going into a unit on the back of the fuel filter for you third gen guys, and it's got an electrical connector on it, that's gonna be a lift pump. Then you know whether you've got it been converted in the tank. If it's not there, it's been converted in the tank. They do a, a conversion block that goes on the back of the fuel filter. And now it just has a fuel line that actually goes into the back of the fuel filter. So if you've got a fuel line just going in the back of the fuel filter on third gen, gotta slow down here just a minute, then it's gotta be converted. Talked about another situation that we run into all the time here. And this is a this is an even worse one. This is kind of the perfect storm with the lift pumps. So end user customer, you've had a um, you've probably had a lift pump failure. You're gonna go get yourself a lift pump. If you do that and you use um, what they're gonna what they could sell you at a parts house that you go to is they may send you the fuel the full fuel sending unit. Those sending units are gonna have a pump in them. When you have a pump inside of there, if you just drop it in the tank, you're not gonna have this pump working and that pump working back there that's in the tank because there's no power supply to it. You just drop it in the tank. Also, a lot of guys changing out their fuel sending units because they have a failed fuel gauge. We talk about that in the second gens all the time. All second gen trucks, you can bet your butt your fuel gauge probably doesn't work if it's all in, in conf it's all original configuration. So a guy goes to get himself a new fuel basket. Guess what he does? He gets a fuel basket that's got a pump in it. Now you've got a restriction in the tank because you don't have a power supply back there to that pump. Then this pump on the side of the block or whatever it is, whatever the case may be, is trying to pull through that. Well, some guys figure that out and then they run power back there to that lift pump. They run power to the lift pump. Now they got a lift pump in the tank. They've got the factory pump on the side of the block. One of the two of those is gonna overwhelm each other. There's gonna be a restriction from one side. There's either gonna be a restriction from push through the puller or from the puller through the pusher. You're gonna have a restriction. It's a mess. It is an absolute mess. So even if you've got a pump on the side of the block, if you just bought the truck, you really don't know the history of it. You look underneath the hood, it's kind of a hack job. You see some stuff, it's like, wow, what's going on here? The lift pump's on the side of the block. I suggest you go back, put your ear on the tank and just turn the key on, bump the starter. See if you hear something inside the pump, inside the tank run. I've seen that a lot. I had a lot of customers call me. They're running two pumps like that. So. You know, a couple of different things to this. I hope I've explained it the best to you. Um, you know, just plain old layman's terms. If you got a second gen truck and you want to know whether your truck has been converted to an in-tank lift pump or not, look behind the fuel filter, look for a lift pump. If your lift pump's there, pretty good chance you're in pretty good shape. You always want to make sure that nothing else has been done to it. So a lot of information there. Um, We've been selling VP44s and lift pumps and forever. Uh, it's kind of one of the niches that we fell into here at Thoroughbred Diesel. All the guys on the phone can help you. If you've got any questions about it, we'd be glad to talk you through us. Give us a call, talk you through it, be able to help you with your VP44 or your early common rail truck. So I'm away from Thoroughbred Diesel. Uh, thank you for watching this video. As always, like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate you watching. Thank you.